Hey, I'm Max and welcome to this Unreal Engine 5 beginner tutorial. By the end of this tutorial right here, you should have a simple game like this where you can jump on cubes, you can reach the checkpoint to have a cool particle effect. You have a cube that moves around and you can jump on it and move with it. You have over here a fake cube that you can just walk right through it and a cube that goes invisible and visible every couple of seconds. You can also die if you hit the spikes and when you hit retry, you go back to your last checkpoint. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to subscribe. Okay, so in the last tutorial, we added health to our player and made it so when we run into spikes, we can be defeated. But we have no way to restart the level other than stopping the game and restarting it, which is obviously very inconvenient for players. So let's try to make a little simple game over menu where you can click to restart the level. First, I'm going to go in my main folder add a new folder for the UI but you can put it anywhere you want and inside of it you need to right click go to user interface and then go down to widget blueprint click on it and call it whatever you want but as usual usually we start with w underscore for widget and then I'm going to call it game over open it up and you can see a widget for your whole screen so you can see by default it has a canvas panel and technically you can replace this for other things to put them inside other widgets but we will keep this simple and just put it directly into the canvas panel so first in the common here you have text i'm just going to drag it into the canvas panel now i can click on my text right here first of all we have the anchor which is where it is going to be anchored on the screen in our case we want the middle and i'm going to reset the position x and y and you can see the anchor is at the top left. I don't really want that. I want it to be at the middle. So to do this, just put 0.5 and 0.5 for the alignment. Then in the text, I'm going to put game over like this. And I'm going to reset my position X. And just like that, we have a centered text in the middle. And I'm going to change the color right here in the appearance to a dark red. So now we have this, that's pretty good. I'm going to add right under it a button so I'm going to drag in button in the canvas panel then on that button I will drag in a text because I want a text on my button just not an empty button and same thing I will put the anchor in the middle alignment to 0 0.5 0 0.5 reset the x and y and now you can see they are above each other so for this tutorial to stay simple I will simply increase the position y to something like 45 to keep it under but technically what you should do is instead add a vertical box to the canvas panel and then add those to the vertical box. But just like this is fine for this tutorial. Then the text I'm going to put in retry. And you can see the button is not big enough for the text. So like this should be good. Position X zero. That's good. So it's not very fancy, but that's going to be good enough for the basics. Now, if you go on your button, and you scroll down to events you can see unclick and you can click the plus button right here and it's going to send you to the graph and if you want to switch between the designer and the graph it's at the top right right here so if i click on designer i can see the design of my ui and then graph i can see the graph so when i click the button what do i want to do i want to open the level again to refresh it First, I need to right click and type get current level name. So I get the current level name, then link it up right here. And we have the level name that is passed by the Unreal function. And then we simply have to drag from this and go open level by name. And we can drag this right here. So when we click the button, it's going to open the level that is currently open. So it's going to restart it. Next, in our third person character, when we die, we call Ragdoll and then we can drag from Ragdoll, we can type create widget, so we can create an instance of our widget, W game over. And then that widget, we can simply drag from the return value, add to viewport right here, and it's going to add it to our viewport. So now if I save this and then I run into some spikes two times. I see game over retry, but I can't see my mouse and I cannot click on the button to retry. The reason for this is because by default our input mode is set to game only. So we need to drag from this, set input mode 
to UI only. And then we can drag the widget from the create widget into the widget to focus. And we also need the player controller like earlier, just like player controller and get it right here. We also need to tell the player controller to show the mouse because apparently input mode only doesn't show the mouse. So I'm going to drag from player controller, show mouse, and you can see set show mouse cursor. We simply have to check it like this. And now if I compile and I go die again, you can see I can now see my mouse and I can click on the UI. But you can see when the game starts again, I cannot move anymore. And that's because the input mode is still set to UI only. So what do I need to do? I need to right click, go and begin play, which is called when the actor is created or starts playing. Then I need to get my player controller. I can use the same one since it's right next to it, but you can also get it back. It doesn't matter how many times you get it like this. Get player controller. And then I'm going to set input mode to game only. And I'm going to show mouse cursor set to false. So like this, when I start playing, I'm in game. Now if I die, I can click on my UI and then I'm in game again. And you can see the level restarts when we open it again, everything restarts the way it was. Okay, so I think we've seen pretty much every really basic thing we need. Now I will go into the little bit more advanced, but still pretty much beginner. So let's create a cube that fades in and out, like becomes invisible and invisible again. First, I'm going to go in my blueprints, create a child of the cube, call it BP fading cube, open it up. And then we can see that the material is the same one as the other cube, but that's what we will change to make it invisible and visible. So for this, I will go in my meshes, create a new material, call it M underscore fading cube just like we did with the spikes but this one we will change it to be a translucent material so we can set its opacity so you click on the main node right here to see the material parameters then in blend mode you can see it's opaque i can just change it to translucent and now you can see that some of them disappear like metallic but opacity appeared so depending on the blend mode you can have some nodes that are enabled and some that are disabled now we can hold T and click to add a texture sample or as usual you can search for a texture sample. In this texture sample I will click on it then go on the texture right here and select the one I want. So let's say this one and then link it to the base color. So this is going to put a texture instead of just a plain color on the cube. Next for the opacity we need to create a parameter so I'm going to hold 1 and click and link it to opacity. So you can see with 0 it's invisible and then with 0 0.5 it's slightly visible and then 1 it's fully visible. But we need to change this in the game. So for this we need to set it to a parameter. So we can right click, convert to parameter and then change it to opacity or you can call it whatever you want. Now we can save this, go back to our fading cube and the material we need to put the material for the fading cube and now you can see if I go in game and I put my fading cube blueprint right here, you can see that my cube is sort of faded, but not really. Like you, you cannot see through it, it's just a little bit dark. And you can step on it and everything is the same. So now, how do we change the material parameter inside of the blueprint? Well, first we need to use the construction script. And this will actually be executed before begin play. So this is really to construct the object. So over here, what we need to do is create a dynamic material instance for the static mesh. Make sure to select the second one for the static mesh and it will put it like this for you. Then the element index is zero and the source material is simply fading cube. So when our object is created, it's going to create a dynamic material so we can change it. And then we can simply drag from it promote to variable right here and then call it material instance or just material make sure you promote it to a variable and not a local variable because if you use a local variable when you go outside of the script it's not going to be there anymore so we create a dynamic material instance and promote it to a variable so we can use it in our graph 
And then in our graph, after the event tick, we have the parent event tick, which is just the event tick for the cube, because the fading cube is the child of the cube. I guess we don't really need this since we don't do anything in the tick of the cube, but it's better to keep it anyway. And then I can drag my material from the variable to the event graph and then get the material. Then I can drag from the material and set the scalar parameter value. I can put the execute node into it to make sure it executes. And the parameter name is just opacity, it's the name that we put over here. Let's try putting the value to 0.5 and see if it works. Compile, save. And now when I run the game, you can see that it is now translucent. But what if I wanted to fade in and out? Well, I need to create a variable and change the value over here over time. So I will create a new variable, call it opacity, and then set it to a float. I will also create a new variable that will be a boolean, and it will tell if the opacity is going down or up. So I will call it, for example, disappearing. So if it's true, it will be going down, and if it's false, it will be going up. So I'm going to drag this a little bit further and then over here I will add a branch. I will put in the disappearing, get disappearing. So if it is disappearing, what do I want to do? I want to reduce the opacity. So I will do opacity, set opacity, then opacity, get opacity, minus, and then 0 0.01 is pretty good. And simply put it right here. So if it is disappearing, we reduce the opacity by 0.01 because this happens every frame. So 0.01 every frame, it adds up pretty quick. Then if we are not disappearing, so if we are appearing, we want to set the opacity to get opacity plus 0.01. We just link it up right here and then we link it to the false. Finally, we need to make sure to set the disappearing to false or true when we reach 0 or 1 so it doesn't just keep going in the negative or above 1 because opacity is just between 0 and 1. So after reducing it, we can check if the opacity is lower than 0 and we can move this a little bit more. If it is lower than 0, then we want to link this branch right here and if it is lower than 0, then we want to set disappearing to false because once you reach zero you want to start going back up and then we can link this here and if it is not lower than zero then that's fine we can just keep going and for the other one it's the opposite if it's greater than one then we need to set it to disappearing so we'll set disappearing like this you can just copy and paste or drag it again set disappearing to true and then link it right here and if false then we can simply keep going make sure to link this up pretty make sure to link up everything in your execute nodes so now if we take a look at this what does it do well first we check if we are disappearing if so then true we will reduce the opacity by 0.01 if false we will increase it but our goal is to go from 0 to 1 we don't want to go above to 2 because it's going to be the same as 1 and we don't want to go below to minus 1 because it's going to be the same as 0. So how do we make sure we don't go below 0 or above 1? Well right here we check if our opacity, so this right here will return the value after changing it. If it's lower than 0, so if true, it will set disappearing to false which will make it go up instead of down. So once it, so once it goes for example 1 then 0, then disappearing will be false, so it will go back to 1. And the same thing here, after adding to the opacity, if it's higher than 1, then we set disappearing to false, which will mean that it will go 0, then 1, then disappearing will be true, so it will go back down to 0, and then lower than 0, disappearing false, so it will go back up to 1. And then finally, we need to make sure to put our value over here. So I will drag in my get opacity and put it right here. And just so it's a little bit more visual for you, maybe I will add a print string and print my opacity so you can see the value go up and down. And now if I go in game, I can see that my cube fades in and out at 0.01 per frame. And you can see when it reaches 1, it goes back down, and when it reaches 0, it goes back up. 
if you wanted to stay invisible for a bit longer, for example, you could do over here if it's lower than minus one. So it will go all the way down to minus one and it will stay invisible for much longer. So you can see now it stays invisible for one second or actually two seconds because it has to go back up to zero after and then it goes back visible and you can see that even when the block is invisible I can still step on it because I didn't change the collision profile I just made it translucent. So this can be used to make some pretty cool platformer where the tiles turn invisible and you have to sort of remember where they were. So there you go, we now have a pretty cool UI and a cool fading cube that goes invisible invisible in our UI that lets us retry after time. Thanks for watching this part, hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you're learning pretty well. The next part should be the last one, we will add a checkpoint and also a saving and loading system so the game doesn't start from scratch every time you restart the game. So make sure to tune into that. And you should have a pretty good understanding of the basics and you should be able to start making your own games after that.